I'm 25, 26, 27. All my buddies are in New York City making big money uh, on Wall Street. I'm not making much money at all. I'm still trying to find my way. And this mind screw is, man, like, should I just go back and, and get a job, a regular job? I'm not trying to like find this, this, this way. But my gut and intuition was saying, no, just keep staying in the path. And I did. Uh, and I, the reason I share that is because it's that whole comparison is the thief of joy and looking at, man, he's here, she's there, I should be here, which is all garbage. It's, it's stinking thinking. For me personally, growing up, it was, I want to be an NFL quarterback. And growing up back in New Jersey, youngest of eight kids, um, I felt like I knew as an athlete, I uh, had some success. But when I was real young, my mom and dad got divorced. I was five. I was a lunch ticket kid, no money. And um, my dad moved away when I was young. But when I was 20 years old, uh, my pops um, passed away of a heart attack. And if there's you ever ask yourself that question like, hey, who's the one person in my life that I don't want taken from me right now? At that point in my life, my father was everything for me. He believed in me. He'd write me notes all the time. Um, and all of a sudden, he's gone. As a 20-year-old young man trying to figure out what was my major going to be, you know, government, politics, kinesiology, um, my faith, all of these things I was trying to figure out. I think when you're in your 20s, you're trying to do that. All of a sudden, my dad was gone. I questioned, I questioned um, uh, my own faith. After his uh, service, his funeral, I, I, I wasn't even going to go back to college. That was real for me. Like, I want to get in a car and drive across the country and get lost. Like, that's what I wanted to do. Because if you've ever faced adversity before, sometimes you're at wit's end and you're like, you know what, it'd be easier to get in a car and drive and sometimes that's what you might do. But that was a big turning point saying, nope, I'm gonna go back and, and, and try to get through this time. I remember competing for a starting football job at a division one school, being on a football field crying. I'm in tears on a football field because I'm sad and I'm like, what am I doing? Sometimes you gotta suck it up and you just do what you gotta do. Fast forward, after college, I had the uh, opportunity to go play professionally overseas in Europe. It was called the World Football League. I took that opportunity to go play and see Europe and, and play football, still with the dream of maybe someday circuitously uh, making it to the NFL. When I was 25 years old, I had a devastating back injury, 308 discs, spinal stenosis, degenerative back disease, left me motionless on a football field uh, in Exxon, Provence, France. I couldn't fly home because my back was in such bad shape and a nurse was coming to my apartment two times a day, shooting me up with painkillers. Um, I was using Vicodin, I couldn't get off Vicodin. It was one of those times in your life where you're like, man, like, I'm in a bad place. I'm in a really bad place. So imagine this, you have a dream and a vision, hey, I wanna be a pro athlete or whatever that is. And now all of a sudden you know that's not the direction that you can go in, will go in. And for me, that was when I knew that football was over and I had to create a new dream, having no idea what that was like. I uh, went down this path to try to heal my back in my 20s without having pain, without having surgery. and. Uh, eventually what happened is it took me about five years to get a pain. One of the first people I met back in the U.S. when I was rehabbing um, was a guy named Michael King. He says, hey, I have a bad back and I'd like for you to train me and help me lose some weight, get rid of my back pain, not knowing who this guy was until um, I realized Michael King, oh wait, that's the guy that produces Oprah Winfrey, Wheel of Fortune, Jeopardy, and all of a sudden now I'm working with him. And he's like, wait, what, what are you, where are you going? What are you doing? He's like, you need to come out to California in Malibu because if you're gonna get into fitness and sport, everything happens uh, out in SoCal. I'm like, man, I don't wanna go out to California. Uh, I'm an East Coast guy. And next thing I know, I'm living in Malibu. <laughs> and 
not knowing the, the Hollywood world real well. Tom Hanks was a neighbor, Rob Reiner, all actors and actresses. I just wanted to get this guy well and healthy and get his body right, his mind right. And it, it wasn't like, hey, I wanna go work with pro athletes. It's like, I just wanna help anyone. I don't care how old they are, what they look like. I just wanna help people. If you find your passion and serve people, not like, hey, I wanna work between nine and five. No, I'm talking all the time. And you, and you have that desire. I believe your purpose is revealed. It's not like you go find it. I think it's revealed through the servanthood of others. But I look at my 20s, my entire 20s, losing my father at 20, my back injury at 25, uh, trying to heal my back pain without having surgery, having multiple different jobs. In my late 20s, I opened up my gym. My 20s was all about learning and getting experience. And it was God's way of getting all these experiences to eventually when I opened my gym, it was all about people who wanted to, number one, get pain free and to perform at their absolute best in life. Looking back, it was all part of a master plan. I could have never imagined that God was preparing me to eventually get into the field of changing people's lives from the inside out.